So here it is, guys. I told you guys I'm not a fanboy of anybody. I'm gonna give it to you guys straight and clear all the time. 6,047 miles. We've got a locker issue and we've got an engine code. Stay tuned. Okay, guys, hey, and girls, everyone. Um, back at the shop, you saw what happened with that funny issue. Uh, maybe I thought it was gonna be some kind of um, loose connection or battery connection, but you can see these are connections go to the ECU. Like I absolutely can't get them up. They're latched um, just for purpose. Um, I guess you guys can see that. I'm gonna go ahead and hit this with some connectors and see what it shows. I think you can see if I get my arm out of the way somehow, I guess I can't. Um, so it's showing right there, 12 volts, 12.45. It doesn't matter what I do with them. Uh, it's 12.45, 12.45, like we're good to go. Um, they are super tight. Um, I don't know. That's a jiggy type of connection, but it's just the connector the way it's built. Uh, everything's super tight though. So let's get the code reader out and take a look, see what it says. So what I'm doing right now is uh, I'm gonna go ahead and Turn the ignition on. I'm plugged into the OBD2 port and, and I'm going to see if I can't figure out what's going on. Uh, it's got a code right now and I'm curious to see what it is. So we're creating a link right now and we'll see if we can't figure out what that can is. And so what this reader does is it's basically just reading what's going on with the computer right now. And so you see right of me. It says high speed CAN communication bus. There's lots of them. You can see the errors in red. Um, goodness. So U001. Um, okay. High-speed CAN communication bus. God, it's got a lot of them. Guys, we're just going through and seeing what's going on. Um, So basically what I did is I just cleared them. I want to see what happens. We're going to go drive it around and see if it comes back. Um, 
This is the second time it's done it in 24 hours, so we'll see what's going on. Okay, so it's going to be a U001. That's what the code is, guys, so far. Let's see what happens. Okay, you can see right now the code. You can see right now, guys, the code's gone. I cleared it. Uh, we've still got another issue, uh, and that's a service access locker system. So just so you know, apparently this is a common issue. When you go on a long trip, the oil gets thin in the rear end and seeps into the connector on the center of the back of the locker and causes it to fail. They currently don't have them available. There's a DIY fix that you can pull the rear end housing open, pull this sensor off, drill two holes in it, force silicone through it, let it dry, and then reinstall it, and it fixes it. There's also another way to order a harness from Z Automotive. So that's what I've done. It's a $200 harness. I shouldn't have to be doing this. It's 6,000 miles. Uh, and I'll tell you guys if that fixes it or not. So what happened was um, the first time I was just driving on the road and I lost power steering and almost killed a guy on the side of the road. Um, and then I basically pulled over, shut it off, turned it back on, everything was fine. Well, about six or seven miles down the road trying to get home, it did it again. The next time, um, not only did I lose um, power steering, but the shifter light was flashing and it wouldn't shift out of second gear. So I got it home, killed it, uh, and then the third time it happened, all the instruments in the dash were freaking out, going crazy like this, going up and down, up and down, and this was all flashing. Now the motor ran just fine. The stereo was never affected. It never stopped playing, or it didn't have the same flashing issues that it did. So something else is going on. Um, it's not battery, because if it was battery, I would have lost the stereo. I would have, it would have turned off, turned on, turned off, turned on, you know, something like that. The AC, the stereo never is affected. It's just this dash. This stuff starts freaking out and flashing, and M1's flashing. Uh, it won't shift, so um, that's what's going on. I'm going to try to catch it on video so you guys can see. But anyway, I told you guys, not a fanboy. Um, it's about having the right vehicle to do the job. And this is two Jeeps now that have had serious electrical issues and gremlins under you know 10,000 miles this is now 6,000 the JL only had 5,500 miles on it so not super happy right now anyway stay tuned so I wanted to show you this guys I'm driving uh, you know people were saying oh could it be the you know battery or could it be you know the alternator well I'm driving right now you saw that the battery on the meter was showing 12.45 and now that we're driving, the charging system is actually working because you see that it's reading a voltage of four point or one point four zero, so fourteen volts. So that's not it either. Um, and just so you guys know, when I did pull um, the codes, I didn't see a code for the locker, even though it says check system lockers. Um, I looked the connections; all the connections are good and sturdy. They were they were locked in and tight. Uh, they were clean. Uh, the dielectric grease was still in them from the factory, so uh, we'll just continue monitoring this. So I took a short drive. You can see I went about three or four miles. It hadn't happened again. I will preface this with, um, I came out the other night, it snowed real bad, and it was probably, it was negative three degrees and nine degrees outside, and since then it's back to, I think it's probably 30, and it's been in between the 50s and 60s. Uh, and that was just a few days, that was four days ago. Uh, anyway, that morning I went out to start my truck and the Gladiator was dead. Uh, it wouldn't start, it was it was not doing anything. So I went out and looked at it and realized that it had no battery, it just barely clicked. And when I when I put my hand on the brake and reached in to start it, uh, everything inside just started flashing everywhere. So I quickly assumed that maybe it didn't have enough voltage. Uh, I had a friend come over and bring me a voltmeter and hit the battery, the main battery. And sure enough, it was showing nine volts. So I pulled the main battery, um, checked the voltage on the bottom motorcycle battery or whatever you want to call it, secondary battery. Uh, and it was showing nine volts as well. So I put them both on a charger, charged them both back up to 12 volts, and then uh, started driving it. 
and subsequently ever since then all these things have been happening uh, including starting with um, the flashing lights on the gear shifter and it not wanting to shift so that was the first process after that um, then it was the steering literally I was going 75 miles out on a highway coming around a curve and the steering just went out um, so it was all manual all the way and like that's when I almost killed the guy and then it just kept getting worse from there it went from uh, the steering to the steering and the dash flipping out and the, the transmission not wanting to shift um, and so that brings me to right now so now you guys are fast forwarded to right now what was going on and this morning I made a quick run five minutes and I warmed the Jeep up uh, then drove it uh, maybe five minutes down the road and as soon as I was pulling in the parking lot to my shop uh, it did it again the, the dash started flashing dramatically and all the gauge dials were going wow 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 and so I immediately just killed it and of course I had no power steering so I just stopped killed it in the alley started it back up and then it reset it and so that's what's got me to this point right now so could it be all possible to that I don't know so what I did do is when I looked that code up, that U001, that's a high speed uh, CAN bus error. And so it could be BCM, body control module, ECU, ECM. Uh, so what I did is since that happened with the dead battery, I haven't um, basically disconnected the ECM. So I didn't know if it needed a manual reset or whatever. So just before I took this short drive now, what I did is I pulled both connectors on the ECM and pulled them off the unit itself completely. Um, let it set for a second, completely lose discharge, probably five minutes, and then plugged it back all in, snapped it all in back good, and took this drive. And so that's where I'm at. And uh, stay tuned through the video and I'll let you know if it happens again. Guys, one other thing to note, um, you see the mileage down there. Take a look at that. This is 6,000 miles. Um, there was nothing to cause that dead battery. I thought that it had dead cells. Um, like I said, I, I run it with a voltage meter. It's just fine. It's never showed low. Um, that was just a random happenstance. It had been setting for about three days. And like I said, the actual day that it wouldn't start, it was negative three that morning. And so I, I don't know. I don't know if it just... Uh, succumb to the cold or what but there was no kind of parasitic draw uh, i've looked for that there was nothing left on so so any, anyway i just wanted to catch you guys up on that okay guys so fast forward a few days uh we haven't had the incident happen again um i'll say that that all electrical limits have passed since i pulled the ecm let it completely discharge and then, you know, five or 10 minutes after that, I plugged it all back in, put it back together, and I've been running it for about three days. Now, I will say this, the locker is still on, the service lockers, um, can't figure that out. Like I said, there's still no codes on it, it's still had an alarm, so I don't know. Again, I checked everything, ohmed the connectors, all the connectors are working just fine. So, here's the $200 part I ordered. Now, I'll show you what it is. Let's open this up a little uh, before I do that, what I'll do is I'll show you this. I'll show you the part number. It is Z Locker OEM, Z Locker OEM, part number Z LKR OEM. What, and it's still work on the JL as well. What it does, you can see right here, this is the sensor right here that's actually housed in the rear end that controls the lockers. Now, this is inside, it doesn't look like this, it kind of looks more something like this and it's on the back of the ring gear and basically what it does is this tells your uh ecm what's going on with the locker and if it's locked or unlocked when you're trying to lock or engage it uh and it senses movement and and then that's how it controls when or when you can uh functionally go into lockers or out of lockers now what happens is essentially they say that it sets real close to the oil bath in the rear end, and so as it's turning, it slings a lot of oil on it, and somehow it seeps into this bad boy and causes them to fail. So what Z has done is realized that the sensor still runs conductivity through it. So what they did is they just essentially made this for the outside. Since it still processes electrical current through it, what you do is you take your factory harness and plug it in here, 
here's your sensor and this plugs into the back of the housing on the rear end therefore the computer thinks it's still in process it's still in line and it still works now it still controls what happens whether you can or can't but the factory ECM doesn't know that the one actually in turn the housing doesn't work so let's go ahead and get this plugged in and see if it works now again remember when this happens it doesn't identify the front of the rear locker that's failed it just tells you one has failed now Z automotive and the wonderful internet gurus have determined that essentially nine times out of ten this happens it's the rear locker because of it's so close to the oil bath in the rear end so let's knock it out and see what happens okay guys we're underneath here we're gonna see if we can't get this retention clip poked out you can see because I've got this uh, um, Artec truss it kind of makes it hard to get to but nevertheless we're gonna get to this guy and get him out of here and we did hey ha, 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 ha. okay so now we're gonna take the new Z automotive plug and I think what we're gonna do is let's let's go ahead and it's all factory connections, so let's go ahead and do this side of it first. I think it'll be easier for me, myself and my fat fingers. Okay, it locked on pretty simply. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna make the factory connection uh, like so. And that's pretty much it. So um, that was a super easy install, guys. So basically what we did is we just supplemented this main connector is what comes from the factory ECM and we put the Z automotive in place. This goes back to the factory housing. Here's the sensor and then here's the connector. So let's move up and see if it worked or maybe this isn't the right locker. I guess we'll get that determination here in a second. Okay guys, so uh, unfortunately uh, this is kind of like a real quick fast forward. Um, what it is, you saw me install the, uh, the Z automotive cable. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it didn't solve the problem in the rear. So I went ahead and replaced that and then moved back up the front, put it in the front. It didn't change it there either. So that tells me that there's a wiring harness issue somewhere. Now, um, I've seen in the forums a lot of people have had to replace their wiring harness. You can order it online for about $156. Uh, it's kind of intensive, couple hours. Uh, you have to remove your gas tank for sure. So it's not something I'm gonna uh, tackle. I think what I'm gonna do uh, is conclude this video with uh, just more electrical gremlins. It's funny, the irony is you can see the hood up again. Um, I'll move into frame so you can see that guy. Um, Again, it continues, uh, and from what I've read, this has been going on since uh, 2020. So how they haven't fixed it or sent a TBS out to say that it's an issue uh, is crazy. You can't get this separate assembly by itself. Jeep is replacing your entire rear end because they can't get the subhouse assembly for the sensor when your lockers go out. Uh, I, I can't have that done either. I I've got. The lift, um, I've changed the bracket setups. Uh, I've also built in the Artec trusses. So I'm just, a, again, super pissed, Jeep, super pissed. Um, you keep letting me down. So is this an incredible machine when it's running? Sure. As far as it coming off a lot, man, it's got some serious issues. So that being said, uh, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna close this vehicle down, uh, or close this video down. Uh, so far, the other gremlins haven't come back. The electrical issue, we, we now believe that that was for sure due to nine volts and me walking out there and hitting the starter button and, and causing the ECM to just go crazy. Now, obviously there was no way for me to tell that the battery was at nine volts. I couldn't tell that. Uh, so it's not something you could avoid. What I will say this is that's scary. 
Hey, it's uh, it's scary to happen considering it was at nine volts. It wasn't dead, it was only at nine volts. I hit the starter button like you normally would do, jump in your vehicle, and of course everything went crazy, and then subsequently from then, all those ghosts and gremlins started happening. Um, losing power steering, losing the ability to shift gears, uh, the brakes becoming like super hard to compress. Um, and all at random times, the, the gauge is going nuts. Um, so that's something to be said. <laughs> if you've got a gladiator, you may want to consider some kind of trickle system, like a solar pattern that you can put on the hood, like a couple of these people make. Uh, that way it's constantly trickle tires and you don't get, into the shit, shit. You don't get in, put in this situation. If this happened on a trail, I don't know what you'd do. Um, Cause knowing now what I would have to do, I would have to have a charger first of all. And what I would do is pull the generator off the trailer. I'd pull both batteries out. I'd have to individually charge them till they were both back up to full capacity, plug them back in, let the ECM come up and run. And then once it's come up and run, then I would basically have to leave the power connected to the rest of the Jeep, but pull the two cables on the ECM, let the ECM completely discharge and then reinstall the cables and then go through this process. That's the only thing that's fixed this guy. I haven't had a gremlin since, but you should never have those issues anyway. That being said, I guess the locker video will be different. Since, it's a wire, since we know that it's a wiring issue, um, right now it's telling the computer that it thinks that both lockers are locked even though they're not. Um, you can individually turn the tires, it's easy to steer and the rear tires turn independently of each other. Um, so we know it's not locked, it's just fooling itself, which means there's a wiring short somewhere. It would be incredibly hard to find, find that out. So what I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna do away with the uh, locking feature running through the vehicle system. So I'll put another video up, comment if you wanna see it. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to manually wire um, the lockers front and rear to the switch bank. Uh, so I can just go ahead and go in there and turn them on and turn them off manually. Um, now you will lose uh, the lighting system and stuff. You won't, you know, you won't be able to tell and you won't even use the system in the bottom by the shifter anymore. Uh, I'm gonna wire it to my switch bank so I can just turn them on and off manually. Uh, remember, you assume responsibility that, that you don't wanna do it while you're moving. You don't wanna do that. Uh, if you do that, you'll cause some catastrophic damage. So make sure that you remember if you're gonna manually wire them like this, uh, that's how you do it. Uh, to this point right now, um, what day is it? It is, it is Sunday uh, the 9th. Know that the only fix if you have this issue is hopefully you can try to plug the, if, if you don't do some serious stretching of your frame, a lot of flexing, uh, like that, but you have this issue, most likely this is gonna fix it because it's not due to, um, like I was saying, it's not due to you stretching a cable or breaking a cable, it's due to the sensor failing inside the housing. Uh, if you return it to Jeep right now, you were talking about having the full axle replaced. They do not just do the sensor. I know it sounds crazy. They don't replace the locker sensor. They replace your entire axle. So if you've got any kind of lift done or changed your brackets or made anything, you will be getting new axles. It's a long process. That's front or rear. Uh, they don't just individually fix this. So that being said, if this doesn't work, then the manual switch is what's gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and wire the lockers to my switch. I'm not gonna get my axles replaced. They're both trust. They both have RCV axles in them. It just doesn't make sense. So that being said, I'll put it in another video. If you have any questions, like, comment, subscribe, add them in the details, and I'll get back to you as much as I can and as fast as I can. Uh, remember guys, I work a day to day, so um, I, I try to respond to every comment and I try to answer them as best I can. But if you have questions, let me know and I'll go over them with you. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching.